When a new moon passes between the Earth and the Sun, some or all of the Sun's rays are blocked from reaching the Earth. By cosmic chance, even though the Sun is 400 times wider than the Moon, it's also 400 times farther away. Therefore, the two objects appear the same size in our sky. Because the Earth and Moon have very predictable orbits, astronomers can very easily forecast eclipses. Why aren't there eclipses every month then? In regard to the Earth, the Moon's orbit is normally inclined a few degrees north or south. This causes the Moon to be slightly above or below the line of eclipse. Typically, there are three types of solar eclipses. The most breathtaking is a total solar eclipse. It occurs when the surface of the Sun is fully covered by the Moon. You can only observe a total eclipse if you're standing in the umbral shadow. As a result, the path of totality refers to the imaginary line generated by the shadow as it travels around Earth. The annular solar eclipse, on the other hand, occurs when the Moon passes in front of the Sun when it is at its furthest point in its orbit around Earth. Unlike a total eclipse, the moon in this eclipse appears to be a little smaller and incapable to cover the entire solar disk. The third eclipse is a partial solar eclipse, which will take place this year on April 30th. As the name implies, the moon is never able to completely hide the sun during this eclipse, and instead just cuts a piece of the sun's disk. It's worth noting that a total solar eclipse in one city may be partial in another, and vice versa. Here is an animation to help you visualize the path of the eclipse. The solar eclipse will be visible only in some parts of the world. The list of the places include Chile, Paraguay, Bolivia, Peru, Argentina, and Antarctica. Let us now look at the exact timings of this solar eclipse in some major cities of the world. On Arenas, Santiago, Buenos Aires, Easter Island. Never watch a solar eclipse with your naked eyes. Also use some protective gear while observing a solar eclipse. Use the guide given in the description to watch the solar eclipse safely. I would strongly recommend you to invite your friends and family in your backyard to witness this spectacular astronomical phenomena. An eclipse never comes alone. A lunar eclipse always occurs about two weeks before or after a solar eclipse. For this reason, be curious and eager to watch the total lunar eclipse on 15 and 16 May 2022. What do you say? Do you like watching such rare celestial events? Please share as we go through all of the astronomical events of May 2022. Venus-Jupiter conjunction. Dream of being able to see two of your favorite planets at the same time and in an unexpected conjunction in the night sky. Yes, the hottest planet of the solar system, Venus, and the largest planet Jupiter are set to conjunct with each other on the dark night of 1st of May. However, in reality, they will be millions of kilometers apart. Watch out for this illusion in the constellation of Pisces, as this event will easily be visible through naked eyes. Consequently, you might also bring out your telescope, since you don't want to lose out on seeing Jupiter's moons, especially Jupiter's largest moon, Ganymede. New Moon The moon will turn off its light and become entirely obscured by the sun's glare, disappearing for a few days. This is due to the moon's four-week orbit around the Earth. Earth-sign nights Earthshine is a dim glow caused by the sun's light, reflecting off the Earth's surface and back onto the moon. It's also referred to as Da Vinci Glow. Earthshine light is significantly weaker than the lighted region of the moon because it is reflected twice, first off the Earth's surface and then again off the moon's surface. When this occurs on the moons of other planets, it is known as planet shine. Eta Aquariid Meteor Shower 2022 this is what every dreamer who has ever dreamed of a sky filled with shooting stars has been yearning for. Our night sky have been graced by the Eta Aquariid meteor shower. The shower, which is made up of small space debris from the famous Halley's Comet, will be active from 19 April to 20 May, with a peak rate of meteors around 6 May. As for the comet, it returns about every 75 years and will next appear in mid-2061. Astronomers can anticipate anywhere from 40 to 50 meteors every hour. If you are truly enthusiastic about shooting stars, keep your desires and cameras ready. The best time to watch the shooting stars is after the midnight. Bring a blanket or lawn chair to enjoy the star disco from the comfort of your own home. Don't miss out on this truly memorable opportunity. 
Total Lunar Eclipse. The total lunar eclipse of May 15, 2022, is without a doubt the most anticipated event of the month and the year. Eclipses are an infrequent occurrence, yet they are extremely fascinating to observe. The total lunar eclipse of May 15, 2022 will last one hour and 25 minutes. The Earth's brilliant red shadow will completely cover the moon's face, altering the hue of the moon as we know it. Unlike a solar eclipse, the eclipse's blood moon phase may be safely observed with the naked eye. The eclipse will be visible from most parts of the world, including the United States, South America, and some parts of Europe and Africa. Although a full thorough video with exhibition at the head of the serpent that is a crown of seven stars. Now the fact that the dragon is red and the moon is at the woman's feet is very interesting because the sign of the Lord's return was given to the prophet Joel in chapter 2 verse 31. Remember that the Lord does nothing without revealing his secrets to his servants, the prophets. And Joel was his servant and a prophet. So God revealed to Joel the sign of his coming in the Old Testament. And the sign of his coming is also the sign of the rapture and the start of Daniel's 70th week. That's the start of the great day of his wrath. The sign was that the moon must turn to blood before the great day of the Lord begins. And this is also confirmed by Luke in chapter 21, verses 25 and 28, by the sign that is in the sun, the moon, and the stars. This is the sign of the day of our redemption. And again, another confirmation is here in Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 through 5, we see the sign again in the sun the moon and the stars we see that the woman is clothed with the sun and the moon is at her feet and one third of the stars are being thrown down to the earth okay this is an exact match with all of the other signs that are given to us in the scriptures okay and this is the sign of our redemption this is not the sign of armageddon this is the sign of the day of our redemption which happens at the beginning of Daniel's 70th week, at the start of seven years of great tribulation. We're going to be taken out and rescued out of the great tribulation at the very beginning, not at the middle, not at the end, at the beginning. We are not appointed to the wrath, and Daniel's 70th week is a week of wrath. So the sign that's in the sun, the moon, and the stars is the only sign that there is for the rapture and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And all of these signs that we were given, they're all the same signs, folks. Again, the sign is in the sun, the moon, and the stars. The stars are falling to the earth. This is the rapture, folks, and all of these signs are one. They're all one and the same sign. So not only do we know that the moon must turn to blood, but we also know that the moon must turn to blood at the feet of the woman. Blood moons are already rare, okay? But having to pinpoint where that blood moon is going to occur is even more rare. The blood moon that's coming up on May 15th, 16th is at the feet of the woman. And this blood moon that is at the feet of the woman won't happen again until April 14th of the year 2032. So the blood moon will also be right above the dragon constellation serpents that has the seven crowns causing the dragon to appear red by the color of the blood moon that's at the woman's feet. I believe that this could be the true Revelation 12 sign. It might just be. The so-called Revelation 12 sign in September 23rd of 2017 was not the true Revelation 12 sign. The moon did not turn to blood at her feet. Okay? And we did not get raptured and the Lord did not come. Okay? However, I do believe that the Lord used that as somewhat of a way to, to bring people to start watching. I believe that was a pivotal moment where a lot of people started to watch for the Lord and it really brought a lot of attention to his coming. So the Lord was able to use that sign, even though that wasn't the real Revelation 12 sign, he was able to still use it for his purpose. And that was to bring many to him. 
and to get many people saved. I believe that the real Revelation 12 sign is the same sign that was given to the Old Testament prophet Joel in chapter 2, verse 31, and the sign in the Gospel of Luke in Luke chapter 21, verses 25 through 28, and also in Matthew's Gospel in chapter 24, verses 29 through 31, and given to the Apostle John in Revelation chapter 6, verses 12 through 17. The sign is that the sun turns to darkness, and I believe that this darkness will be caused by the cloud that God will come on. This thick, dark cloud is going to block out the sun, causing great darkness, and this event occurs at the same time when there is a blood moon that's taking place at the woman's feet. I believe this is our greatest sign because the moon doesn't turn to blood every single day, folks. It's very rare, and it's even more rare when the blood moon happens at the feet of the woman. This blood moon is also in the constellation of Libra, which is the scales, which represents judgment. In Daniel chapter 5, verse 27, it says, Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. The balances are scales, and those scales are representing judgment here in this verse. And this blood moon is not only at the feet of the woman, but is also right underneath the dragon, giving reason for the dragon to be red, which Revelation 12 specifically mentions it's a red dragon. Perhaps it's trying to hint us to the blood moon being red right underneath the dragon. This is exciting in the fact that this is no ordinary blood moon. This blood moon is on a Moedim on the second Passover. After our Lord has been gone on a long journey for 2,000 years, and now we have a rare blood moon at the feet of the woman in the scales of judgment, making the dragon red because the blood moon is underneath it. If you still don't understand the sign, let me just go ahead and quickly recap for you and help you out. There's only one sign of his coming. That is the rapture sign. That sign is in the sun, the moon, and the stars. We find this throughout the scriptures. According to Joel chapter 2 verse 31, Acts chapter 2 verses 20 through 21, Luke chapter 21 verses 25 through 28, Matthew chapter 24 verses 29 through 31, Revelation chapter 6 verses 12 through 17, Revelation chapter 12 verses 1 through 5, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars, the sun shall be darkened and the moon turned to blood and the stars will fall to the earth, that is the sign of his coming for his bride to rescue her from the judgment and the wrath that is about to come on this Christ rejecting world. John chapter 3 verse 36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So the only way to escape the wrath is to believe in the Son of God, that is Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. And if you don't believe, then God's wrath abides on you, and you will not escape when the judgment comes. So Jesus is the only way to be saved. He is the only name given to mankind in which we must be saved. There is no other way. You hear from other people that you can believe in whatever faith you want and that there's multiple ways to God. That is false doctrine. That is not true. Jesus is the only way to the Father. Okay? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through Him. So again, the sign of the rapture is in the moon, turning to blood. But there's been so many blood moons, and there's been no rapture. What's the difference between this blood moon and all the other blood moons that have passed? This is not just any blood moon. This blood moon happens to be on his Moedim, his appointed feast day. Not just any Moedim, it's a specific Moedim that is mentioned in Proverbs chapter 7 verses 19 through 20. 
For the good man is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. He hath taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. The good man is Jesus. The bag of money refers to his reward being with him. The long journey refers to the day appointed, which is the second Passover. So this May 15th through 16th is exactly 2,000 years since Nisan 1 of 29 AD, which was likely the year 4,000. And if God is going by the ancient 364-day-a-year calendar that was found with the Dead Sea Scrolls, then May 15th, 16th is the third day after 2,000 years, meaning it's the day of the Lord. On the second Passover, on a blood moon, at the feet of the woman, and in the scales of judgment. All this is based on prophecy. And if we take a look at the world around us, and the world is ripe for judgment. We are living in the days of Noah, where humanity now has the technology to corrupt human DNA with CRISPR and nanotechnology. They are genetically modifying everything from food to DNA, animals and insects. We are living in the days of Lot also. They're pushing these ungodly Sodom and Gomorrah agendas and trying to indoctrinate children. Everything from television to the classroom, movies, entertainment, video games, advertisements, social media, billboards, it's everywhere, it's worldwide. You cannot avoid it. They're bringing in the B system, the cashless society, where they're going to be able to track and trace everybody with facial recognition and ways to control all the buying and the selling and to be able to cut off people completely from the financial markets if they're not following with the beast's agenda. They are preparing the way for the beast. Everything is ready to go for the third temple also. Israel's on the brink of war with Hamas and Palestine. Iran and Israel on the brink of war. They're just waiting for the deal to fall apart and then they're ready for plan B. Russia and Ukraine and all of the wars and the rumors of wars all around the world. It's just so much. I can go on and on and on. Just to quickly recap all of this, the sign of his coming, they're all the same sign, okay? All of the verses throughout the Bible when it's talking about a sign, all of these verses match each other okay for example we know that the moon must turn to blood that is part of the sign this is a rare blood moon that is in the scales of judgment it's underneath the dragon which is also the serpent with the crown of the seven stars and the blood moon is at the feet of the woman and this blood moon is on a moedim the second passover after 2000 years from nisan one that took place in 29 a.d if we're going by the ancient calendar that was found with the Dead Sea Scrolls of 364 days, which might be the calendar that God is going by, and 29 AD might be the year of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection due to the fact that the coin that was found on Jesus' eye on the Shroud of Turin dated to 29 AD. So this is the highest watch you can get. The rapture won't happen on Pentecost either because there is no blood moon on Pentecost. There's no sign of his coming. That means no rapture, that means no coming. The rapture can only happen with the sign of his coming, the sign that is in the sun, the moon, and in the stars. When the sun is darkened by the cloud of his coming, and when the moon turns to blood, and the stars from heaven fall to the earth. That is the rapture sign. We must be watching for that sign. That is the only sign that was given, and Revelation 12 is the same sign that's in the sun, the moon, and the stars. What links it all together with the Revelation 12 sign is that it specifically mentions that the sign is in the sun, the moon, and the stars in that order. And not only that, but the stars you see that the dragon with his tail draws one third of the stars and does cast them to the earth. So we're seeing the stars falling to the earth. This is the exact same sign that we see in the gospels of Mark, Luke, and Matthew. The sign in the sun being darkened, 
the moon not giving her light, and that happens during a blood moon, and you also see the stars falling to the earth. Okay, folks, this is the same sign. And Joel tells us that the moon will turn to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And Peter also mentions this as well in Acts. So there's only one sign, folks, and this is the sign of his coming. And it's very exciting because not only now do we know that the moon's going to turn to blood, but we also have an area in which to look for this blood moon, and that's at the feet of the woman. So you get a little bit of information from each verse, and you get more details, and you have to put them all together because they're all one sign. We didn't know that the moon had to turn to blood until we look at what the prophet Joel said. We didn't know that the stars were going to fall to heaven and all of this was going to happen at the same time until you take a look at Revelation chapter 6, verses 12 through 17. This all happens at the opening of the sixth seal. So all of these signs are pointing us to the day of our rapture and the start of the great tribulation. So the blood moon is key, folks. The blood moon must occur during the time of the rapture. The rapture can only happen during a blood moon according to scriptures, according to end times prophecy that was foretold by the prophet Joel and Peter and John and Luke. Jesus gave us the sign of his coming and we are not in darkness, brothers and sisters. That day will not overtake us as a thief because we have the sign of his coming. Without the sign, we wouldn't know the day. But with the sign, we can know the day because we can pinpoint every single blood moon that will ever occur. And one of these blood moons are going to be his coming. And I believe this might be it due to the convergence of the prophecies that are happening right now, like Hosea's two-day prophecy, Daniel's 1,290 days prophecy, and 1,335 days. It's been 483 years that have almost passed since the walls of Jerusalem being restored. The 80-year fig tree generation window is coming to an end this year. All of this is pointing us to this year, 2022, being the year. This cannot be a coincidence, folks. This blood moon on second Passover is red hot, and the world is ripe for judgment. And the blood moon is in the scales of judgment. He gave us the sign of his coming. We just need to get that in our heads. This is not the sign for Armageddon when he comes on a horse. But this is the sign of his coming for us, the rapture. Matthew chapter 24 verse 31 makes it crystal clear by matching the ancient Galilean wedding customs. Jesus the bridegroom comes with his groomsmen, the angels, blowing the trumpet at midnight, the bride wakes up from the sound of the trumpet blast. The groomsmen, the angels, lift up the bride in the air. She gets caught up in the air, harpazo, to meet the bridegroom, and is taken to the bridegroom's house. And they celebrate the wedding, lasting seven days, which in this case is days of years. Folks, the night of May 15th or 16th, when the moon turns to blood, might just be the Revelation 12 sign that we have all been waiting for. Mark your calendars as the highest watch day yet. And be sure to be looking up at the time that the moon turns to blood, folks. Folks that live on the east coast of the U.S., the blood moon will start at 11.29 p.m. on May 15th and will last until 12.53 p.m. So you might just get the literal midnight cry. Folks on the west coast of the U.S., the blood moon will start at 8.29 p.m., lasting until 9.53 p.m. And if you live elsewhere, I strongly suggest that you search what time the blood moon will start and end in your time zone. This is the highest watch yet, folks. If you're watching for the Lord's return, don't ignore his only sign he gave us, the sign of his coming. The sign of his coming is the rapture before the seven years of wrath. Many folks are confused and believe it's his second coming which is completely false. Matthew 24, verse 31, 
paints the perfect picture of the Galilean wedding customs, which is the rapture of the bride of Christ. The biggest sign we have is the blood moon. I repeat, the biggest sign of his coming is the blood moon. Jesus will return on a blood moon. The rapture must happen during a blood moon. This is according to the Bible. This is according to prophecy. This is according to the sign of his coming. The rapture is not imminent. That is a false doctrine. The wrath begins at the sixth seal. And that is what the Bible says. And we are rescued from the wrath. At the same time when the wrath comes, that's when we go up. We go up and that wrath comes down. It's our Red Sea moment. The blood moon must also be at the feet of the woman according to the Revelation 12 sign that is in the sun, the moon, and the stars. Folks, I'm all in on this date here being the absolute highest watch of our entire lives. Let us pray for each other daily. The day of our redemption is drawing near. Until next time, God bless you all. And Let's start with this Bible verse today is in the Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. I will share with you a couple of things that I thought were very interesting here about, uh, about May 14th and 15th and 16th here coming up. For one thing, it is uh, the second Passover. It is Pesach Shani which in Numbers chapter 9, God gave them instructions to have a second Passover available for those who could not celebrate it on the normal Passover time because of ritual um, ceremonial being, ceremonially being, being unclean or for being on a journey. And uh, so they had this one day. So this is the uh, second Passover this year will be on May 14th to 15th. And... Um, I think that uh, is interesting, and uh, I think this blood moon pattern, if it's accurate, which I did not really check it, its accuracy, but this was published on the Gevtis YouTube channel, and uh, you know, in light of the fact that Jesus said there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars, and there's going to be a blood moon here, a lunar eclipse on May 16th, 2022, which comes right on near the uh, second Passover there. And then as we know, that also comes right at the time of Israel's 74th birthday and having this blood moon with this pattern like this. If this is accurate, I'd say this is pretty astounding. This is pretty meaningful, in my opinion. And then, then we have Israel's 74th birthday on May 14th on the Gregorian calendar. So right now Israel being technically 73 years old until May 14th, which would turn 74. And since Psalm 9010 describes a generation as 70 or at the most 80, so Israel would turn 81 in May 14th, 2029. That gives about seven years.